G'day to you. Right in about now, you're about to watch an episode of the Ask and Prosper show. This is a weekly episode where you get to ask me any questions and I will try my best to answer them. It's my way of actually helping you by helping you. So this video has been recorded live on Facebook and if you're catching this part, please type in the number two so that we know that you're watching the replay. It also helps us to tailor make this information so that you get the best content. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave us a comment and don't forget to subscribe. I'm hoping you had a fantastic start to the week and now it's gonna be the weekend it looks like the live part of the show has started so let's dive into that i see sue is tuning in thank you so much sue thank you thank you so much for um you know all the support and all the content that you're putting in onto the platform right there i see kylie Stradon is also there thank you thank you thank you um there's a lot of people that are tuning in and as they will be going along, um, you know, have your questions prepared so that if you don't want to watch the whole section, just put out your questions and then I answer them. And if you want to go back to what you were doing, it works out. Oh, you can still watch, um, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the replay of this show. So I promise to go on for a solid one hour because this is the last show of the week. And naturally, um, I think maybe when we have finished the whole week, you might have questions, you might have pending, um, you know, stuff that you might need, um, you know, to ask. This is the show for it. The reason why we do this is because I believe that every person that's running a business online should definitely be profitable and they should enjoy, um, you know, working in that business. And I also believe that, um, you know, um, as, as, as business people, we should be able to create for and relate to, um, you know, those we're going to be demanding money off of. I see Jazz Koa has just tuned in. Thank you so much. I absolutely appreciate your support. Now, you're probably going to love this video more jazz because it's a ask it's a question and answer episode so if you've got any questions let me know hashi car thank you so much i just noticed you were writing me um you know a message i will check it as soon as i finish this but if you've got any questions let's go with them jazz thank you so much for the support and if you think there's a lot of value in the videos Please share them whenever you get an opportunity because that also helps, um, you know, um, it helps me to, um, yeah, grow. It helps me to reach an audience that I cannot reach by myself. The reason why I do this is because I simply want you, um, you know, to, to, to have a business that's profitable so that you can earn more money with less struggle. I see Intan Dongkolomi has just tuned in. Gunjani Baba. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope also you're not driving while watching this because you tend to be a little bit naughty at times. All right. So we've got a whole hour together. Um, I always... Um, you know, segment times like this so that, you know, you might have questions that you, you might not have anyone to ask. So this is the time to ask those questions. Every Friday at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here for one hour so that I can help you earn more money with less struggle. The more people are doing well out there, the better the world becomes, the better the environment becomes for, you know, for everybody else. You know what I mean? Because all you can do is all that you can do. So you might notice that, you know, during the start of the week, there was a little bit of a scare that came up um, as Facebook sort of changed their algorithm, etc., etc. Um, I put up a video about that and I was just like, guys, you don't need to worry about that. At the end of the day, it's their platform. All they're going to do is maybe make it better for the end user. So if you just really want to survive these days, just put out great content, put out so much value out there, educate your audience, inspire them and let them seek you out. Because at the end of the day, if you've got really good content, people will come out, um, you know, they'll trip, stumble and fall to come and get that content. I see Philippe Gouchard is in the house. Bonjour, monsieur. Uh, ça va bien. Très bien, merci. Um, I'm hoping that you, you know, you've had a fantastic uh, week out there. Bonne affaire. Uh, Bonan, wish you all the best in 2018. You too, my man. Have a wealthy year ahead. 
Um, yeah, let us know what you're up to. Let us know how I can help you today by actually helping you. Like I say, the name of this show is the Ask and Prosper Show, where you get to ask me questions and I can actually help you by actually helping you. So if you're running a business online, um, there might be things that might be, um, you know, bugging you. Like, how do I get more traffic? How do I get more leads? Um, you know, specific questions that pertain to your business is the things that I really want to hear about today because general questions, you won't really be helped because there's no way that, um, you know, um, you know, you can navigate the internet all by yourself. There's something new that comes up every single day. So maybe I know something about it. If I'm not sure what it is, I will definitely uh, let you know. And, and then I will investigate and figure out how I can be of help to you. So um, those that are watching right now, can you just type in the comments where you are tuning in from? Just so that we see the scope of where this video is being received. Just type in the city of where you are, just so that we can sort of start um, you know, um, you know, the show knowing who is on and where are they tuning in from and also that people can actually understand that while you're on here, we are, you know, literally helping people from all over to actually be to and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you think there's going to be value in this show, please share it if you watch it up until the end. I see Scott Woodrow has just tuned in. Thank you so much. Sue Mills is in Melbourne. Thank you so much. Bobby Baskaran has just tuned in. Thank you, my man. Um, yeah, it's the Ask and Prosper show. So if you've got any questions, obviously there's been a lot going on this week. And, um, you know, if, if I can be of help, let a brother know. Melbourne uh, from Bobby Baskaran. Thank you so much. All right. So while we're waiting for the questions, obviously, I don't know. It's just something about me. I hate white noise. Uh, while people are ga gathering confidence. Um, I don't know. Have you started, um, you know, attacking or have you started accomplishing whatever you had resolutions for in uh, 2018? If you, um, Bobby says, or could, or could be the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so at the beginning of the year, people would have come up with resolutions. Have you started tackling any of those? If you have, just type in the number one if you are about to give up on your resolutions, type in the number two, and then maybe we can start off the show that way. Robert Broker, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, today is the Friday Ask and Prosper show. So it's one of those where you get to ask me questions and then um, we figure out if I can answer them, I'll answer you um, there and there. If not, then obviously I will research about it and then give you an answer when I get the time. So... About your New Year's resolutions, are they coming into fruition or are you changing a lot about your business or what's actually happening? Can you type in the name of your, um, I mean, what your niche is? I want to know the people that are watching this show right now. What sort of niche do you deal with? I see Leanne Cohen has just tuned in. Thank you so much. Bobby says, number one, get physically and mentally fit up. How's that coming along for you? Because... At the end of the day, Bobby, you would understand a lot of people cannot run a business. A lot of people cannot win on social media because all of those things are a process. All right. People would. And it's not an event. All right. So by physically and mentally fit, are you reading much? Are you running? What are you implementing so that you actually um, achieve those goals? Because at the end of the day, it's one thing to nominate something that you're going to do. And there's, it's one thing to actually formulate a strategy behind it and to actually know what exactly is that is it that you're aspiring for. And once you know, how are you going to know you have actually, you know, received the ultimate fitness? You've actually received the actual mental, um, you know, capacity you want to reach out to. So physically, are you going to attend Tough Mudder this year? Are you going to be physically fit to run around your house with your cats? You let us know so that it's all interesting for those people that, um, you know, are also watching and get to to know and also maybe support you to see how you two can be do and have, you know, the physicality you're looking for and the mentality you're after. Now, Bobby says going well, three cages down so far. Congratulations. Intermittent fasting. That's a that's a really good way of doing it and much more energy throughout the j the day more focus. All right. Because at the end of the day I, I appreciate what you're saying there Bobby because you can't do well if you don't feel well. All right? So if your mindset 
is not optimum, if your health is not uh, putting you out there, I, I promise you, if, if you don't have the energy to actually, um, you know, uh, put out content out there, the energy to follow up on leads, the energy to actually follow up on your suppliers, the energy to produce remarkable content, it will be hard for you to actually convert clients that come through your way. The energy to, to, to want something that you're creating to exist in this world. All right. So a lot of people, you know, don't realize that your gut, your, you know, you, you make a lot of, um, you know, decisions from your gut. So you want to make sure that your gut is not cluttered with, cl with, with a lot of clutter that we accumulate from the food we eat. So you want to make sure that you're eating healthy, you're maintaining your physical fitness. You know why? Because there's a lot of time and effort that's needed for you to actually run a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So if you don't have the energy, if you don't have you know, the capacity to, to, to chase around, you know, a, 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 a lot of the customers, to chase around a lot of strategies up until you get, um, you know, the results, it will be difficult for you to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So I think that's a really good uh, resolution to have as long as you maintain it and also realize that it is a journey. Take that as part of you growing. Take that as part of you actually, um, you know, achieving something because, there's also one other thing about, um, you know, being in business. You should have multiple goals because little achievements, little victories would actually make you feel like you are achieving something. Because if you put out or, 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 or put out, um, you know, um, a goal that you want to make $100 million or $200 million in a year, obviously... That's not going to happen. But if you've got little, um, you know, health goals, family goals, uh, wealth goals here and there, customer acquisition goals, all those little successories will help you um, move forward towards your ultimate goal. All right. So don't forget it is a journey. It is a process and make sure you are feeding the process as you go along. At the end of the day, we're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. If you don't have the energy, if you don't have the capacity to pull that through, my friend, you will be left out, all right? So thank you so much, um, you know, uh, Bobby, for that uh, input. And I see Thorny G. Gibson has just tuned in. Hasini, thank you so much. Peter, how's it going, my man? All right, if you've got any questions today, this is the Ask and Prosper show. We go on for approximately an hour so that we can actually help you by actually helping you. If you've got any questions regarding how to you know, um, you know, um, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Let's air it out. Let's see what, where you at. Let's see how we can help you because, um, sometimes it's, it's a matter of knowing what other people are doing. It's a matter of knowing where exactly you are. Somebody within the crowd might have an answer for the little things that you might be going through. All right. So just going back to what Bobby was talking about, you know, about being healthy and happy, et cetera, et cetera. I see Peter, Peter Burgess, thank you so much. He says, happy, happy Friday, Prosper. Was awesome to talk the other day. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I can't wait for the second round um, of us speaking. And also, Peter, if you do have a bit of content that clarifies exactly what it is that you do, don't hesitate to throw it on the platform, um, you know, because we're here to le leave, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And those that are in Australia, check out the Australian Business Online Directory. It's growing um, at a rate that we didn't anticipate, and a lot of people are benefiting from there. People are putting on their own content. The reason being, Facebook has sort of cut the reach of pages. So if you are relying on um, Facebook delivering your content through your Facebook page, you might be missing out on targeted audiences that are willing and able and ready to make purchases off of, um, off of you. So if you want to know how to be a part of the directory, type in the words, the letters D-I-R, that is short for directory, and I will shoot you through a link so that you too um, can... Uh, um, you know, can, can, you know, create your own profile and, uh, uh, yeah, start creating and relating to the audience that you're going to be demanding money off of. All right. So there's a, there's a lot of talk about, um, maybe habits and the character of what an entrepreneur is supposed to be like, or how you can actually, um, you know, succeed in this business because 
Some people ask me, Prosper, why are you wearing a tie? Or why do you show up at 2 p.m. every single day? Um, and my biggest answer to that is, as for me, I want to create little habits so that I don't fall, um, you know, I, 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 I don't fall back on my promise. I want to create these little habits so that I keep myself honest. Every single day, if I don't show up at 2 p.m., I feel like something is missing out of my life and I need to be somewhere. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, if you um, find little things within your business that keep you solid, find little things that keep you doing something or shipping something every single day, it will help you. And most of it will, will come in effortlessly. All right. So, you know, there could be little habits that you can formulate, little character traits and it might seem like it's a lot at first, but if you take time to study them, they are part of the reasons why a lot of people are actually successful, um, you know, within their businesses. I see Ali Madoi is in the house. Thank you so much. This is a different show, Ali. It's called the Ask and Prosper show where you get to ask me questions and I will answer them. Now, Ngonizashe says, that's me this year. Good habits and routine. Absolutely. Because we as you... Hey, cuz. <laughs> How's it going, Misha? Hope you're having a fantastic um, you know, day and congratulations um, on, on the birth of your little boy there. Oh, it's, it's all exciting stuff. You caught me by surprise. I wasn't anticipating that. But it's all good, champ. It's all good. Um, you see, we are creatures of habit. Your breathing, the heartbeat, um, you know, you talking to people, language, all of those things are character traits, their habits that you pick up and will unknowingly. All right. So once you start doing the right kind of habits, that will actually help you be, do and have whatever it is that you want. All the things happen effortlessly. Can you imagine, you know, um, you know, breathing? Can you imagine if you had to stop um, and think, okay, how many times have I breathed in the last minute? Oh, snap, I don't think I'm breathing enough. Can you imagine how that would be messing out with your brain? Now, can you imagine if you can start putting out you know, habits that actually help you make money, habits that actually help you communicate better, habits that actually make you present better. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, formulate those habits. Find out where do you need to be? Who do you need to become? And then start creating those habits. Wake up early or find out when are you most productive? Are you like a night owl or are you like a morning person, etc., etc.? And whatever you do, Whatever you do, do not forget to look after yourself because you are going to be the person who is in front of everything else that you created. All right. Why buy tickets to, um, you know, to, to a, a concert and not make it there, you know? So uh, hopefully that, that answer was um, really good there. Now, Sue says, my question for you, Prosper, how could we create even more powerful ways to make it convenient for our customers to be loyal to us? That is, that is actually a really, really good question. You can't buy loyalty. I can't buy um, your loyalty uh, right now, uh, Sue. One thing is your customers right now are already paying somebody, they're already listening to somebody, and they're already reading somebody's content. All right. So all you got to do is create an environment where they feel safe, where they feel connected, because you as an entrepreneur, your mission, no matter how you see it, no matter what you sell, is to connect the disconnected. Whatever you're doing, whichever way you look at it, if you're, um, you know, selling clothes, you're connecting clothes to people that are looking for them. So whatever you're doing, find out how can you best connect people in your niche to get what they want, S simple, cheaper, better, faster than anybody else out there. And once you do that, be consistent about providing. If, if people um, in your niche are worried about quality, make sure that quality is consistent throughout. You're never going to skip on corners because let me tell you something. People are busy, but they don't want to relearn new things. And like what I was saying, if you're going to be getting people to 
read your content, watch your videos. You're asking them to change habits. Now, Sue, I want you to tell me something. How, um, how long does it take for a habit to, to, to stick within a person? Can you type it in or somebody else who's watching right now? Can you type and tell me how long does it take for a habit to stick? Yeah. If you know, if you know the answer to that, can you just type in how long does it normally take for a habit to to stick? Um, if somebody starts actively um, trying to change their habits, because that's that's where it's at. You know, usually uh, repeated for twenty eight days, right? So, can you imagine if somebody has to now change the habit of watching my videos at two p.m. AST? I have to make sure I do it for 28 days and then they would understand that, yes, this is now a thing. All right. So I'm trying to change people's habits on content consumption. Now, for them to then become loyal is because there's nothing else out there that compares to what you're offering. So you bring out your authenticity. You bring out who you are. And that 28 days is not going to be, um, you know, a, a, a linear. You know what I mean? So 28 days can be in two years, can be in three years, can be in four years. But that person still wants to come back and find you doing that thing that you promised that you said you're going to be doing it. So if you really want people to be loyal to you over promise, I mean, um, um, make big promises and over deliver. All right. Make really outlandish promises out there and then over deliver on those promises because I don't think anybody out there is actually putting in the work. A lot of people are dabbling. They're just hanging on to what used to work and they're not really going out there to wow their audiences. All right. Attention these days is just a matter of you delighting the customer and the customer knowing that even if they scroll away, even if they scroll through the newsfeed, they will still find you being, doing and having whatever it is that they want. So, you know, the, the idea of you delighting and wowing your customer is a really big one for anyone who owns a business, not just for Sue. You know, in my own experience, you know, as a business owner, I've come to see how important this really is over make big promises and over deliver, you know, and um, I'll, 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 I'll be like this, you know, have you ever realized how important it is to go to a shop and then somebody actually, um, you know, you actually find what you want at the right price and at, uh, using, you know, w w with the right sort of, um, you know, environment, you know, the single most important task for any business is to delight their customer because somebody out there is trying to do something better, cheaper, faster. All right. So if you want your customers to be loyal to you, wow them over and over, go out of your way because some companies cannot do that. They depend on a board to make decisions for them. And I believe within your company, Sue, you're the head honcho. So have them walking outside your door or outside your content or outside, um, you know, your video, having never had a better experience with a human being. Yeah. And they'll come back to buy anything that you're going to be selling them. So create those habits around your people. Make sure that they can depend on you on anything that you and your business and your service is meant to be providing, you know. And Robert says, I like wowing people. Absolutely. The more you wow them, as long as you're not overwhelming them. All right. Because people have so much choice, but people like to go where they're treated well. People like to go where they're inspired. People like to go where they know a leader is going out there. And I think it was, uh, oh, what's his name? J Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy, for those that are well versed with marketing, he said people are moving around with the umbilical cords trying to find somewhere to be connected to. So if you're connecting people to a service that they actually viscerally cannot live without, and if if somebody, yes, and like you say, consistency becomes trans trustworthy. The more consistent you are, it's that then becomes the key to success. And Robert says, I'm guilty of that. I get carried away sometimes. <laughs> All right. So, the, you know, sometimes 
most of the things that I do, it's like it's like a ritual. I wake up at exactly the same time. I start work at exactly the same time. It's first to train my brain. And the more you do it, the more other people get to follow suit. Have you ever noticed when you go to, to sports stadiums, if people start doing the Mexican wave, yeah? If people start doing the Mexican wave, nobody told them at what time to, to start doing that wave. People are, uh, you know, pe people would like to be synchronized. People like to be connected. No matter what you're going to do, be the connector. So connect people to a product, connect people to music, connect people to their feelings, connect people to something that nobody else can help them with, and they're loyal to you for life. And be consistent about it because people are tired of one-click wonders, all right? Because everybody else out there is, is you know, can be, um, you know, a, a pilot if they are given a simulated uh, machine to use. But no one can actually fly the plane and be the captain speaking, all right? So be that captain that has been given permission to actually sell to those people. Can you imagine? Do you know, even if you are on, um, on public transport... The captain can say anything and people laugh. You know why? Because nobody can replace the captain. All right? But if somebody in the, in the, in the, in the economy class tries to say something, everybody tells them to, to shut up. So be the captain of your ship or your crew and make sure that people are following you. And then um, Sue said, uh, So, uh, Sudav Jadav, Sue said, so should we then reward customers for feedback? You know what? I'll tell you something. Every marketer is like a busker. All right? When you're busking out there, you're playing your favorite tune or you're playing a really good tune and you've got three people that are watching you. Try and, try and impress those three people instead of trying to get that person who's just passing through. Because that person who's just passing through is just probably going to give you a smile and he's not going to drop money in your, in, your, in your hat. So as a busker, you want to make sure that if somebody stops and is clapping along to your music, you want to make sure you are entertaining that person a whole lot more than Sally who's walking down the road. Because you will spend a lot of time trying to bring Sally, who is also trying to run, you know, to, to back to work, instead of John, who's been waiting there for 30 minutes, wanting to be entertained by you. So definitely make sure you're rewarding the people that are, you know, giving you that opportunity to speak to them. Stop trying to chase everybody else, because you know what? The internet is awash with highly caffeinated people that don't even care about your existence. So you want to make sure those that actually pay particular attention. And I really, really appreciate every person that's watching this video right now. Here is my emoji. I can't, I can't put out the love emoji, but there is the emoji going on. There's a hundred of those going on there. I really appreciate you could be anywhere else in the world right now. There's about three billion people that could be doing this exact thing at this exact time. So I really, really appreciate you and thank you so much for not just scrolling past or swiping right. All right? So you need to reward those people that are actually paying you attention because attention is actually a very scarce commodity. It's the most expensive thing that you can do because it's harder, Sue, you would know this, it's harder to attract newer clients than to service the ones you already have. The ones that you already have have already given you permission to sell to them at any given moment. So that's the reason why you always have to constantly reward them for giving you feedback, for watching your stuff, for sharing your content. Because then people also like to be made to feel important. So the more you make somebody feel important, the better they are going to be putting stuff out there for you. You know why? Because it's just like dogs. You pet them, they love you a whole lot more. Not a really good analogy right there, but that's that's what I'm trying to say people crave that connection People love to be heard people love to be acknowledged and if their acknowledgement comes in the form of you know Giving you feedback or sharing your stuff. That's how they want to be respected. That's how they want to be acknowledged Give them that which they're seeking for All right, and whatever you do 
Don't forget to be consistent because not everyone is watching your stuff. Not everyone is watching your content at that particular time. Not everybody is reading your blog when you post it out there. So give people time to get to you. All right. Don't be going out there thinking that everybody's ignoring you. No, everybody's busy. Right now, you could be maybe on public transport. Right now, you could be working and typing away while watching this. Or you could be fixing dinner for your, um, you know, for your spouse or for your family. Or you are sitting in the park watching your kid playing football right there. Whatever you are doing, I am not anticipating or expecting that you leave your life and start watching this video. But I'm just saying, if you've given me permission to at least talk to you for an hour or 30 minutes a day, I appreciate that. And so should you appreciate those that are giving you that opportunity to be heard in, you know, in, in, in this noisy um, you know, social media environment. So, Sue, that was a really, really good question, and I really hope that I answered it well um, out there. And if you've got any other questions, uh, let us know. Let us know what, what, what it is that, that uh, I can help you there. Because at the end of the day, once you start having those people that are constantly coming back and wanting more, you no longer have to shout. You no longer have to go and seek out permission from people that don't even care about your existence. All right. So whatever you do as a businessman online, be constantly creating an asset that gives you permission to talk to your audience. Does that make sense? Newspapers a long time ago, they created that permission because there was nobody else that was reaching mass audiences. But now every single person can become his or her own media company. So don't just expect people to watch your stuff, listen to you. And if they do do that, make sure that you actually are helping them by helping them. Because education, information, knowledge is now a commodity. People can just Google whatever they want and figure out what it is that, um, you know, they, whatever answer they have. So it is a privilege, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege to get people to stop doing what they're doing. Press like, engage with your comments. Don't never take advantage of that. All right. Thank you so much, Sue, for that question. Uh, uh, Robert says, absolutely. I'm most grateful that I feel a part of what you're doing by being here in the comments every day. Absolutely. And Robert, I really, really do appreciate, you know, your unwavering support. I mean, since... Maybe day one, we've been chilling out, hanging out every single day. We've caught up twice and on your, um, you know, your, 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 uh, your hangouts, which is really good. And I really appreciate what you're doing in your capacity to bring people in and to actually help them by actually helping them. So that's, that's actually a really good thing that you're doing. So thank you so much for making this world a better place in your own little way, because some people are there trying to make it worse and they're not taking a day off. So why should me and you, um, you know, take a day off? And thank you so much for being relentless and showing up every single day and even sharing my content. I applaud you, sir, for being that man that you've become. All right. Um, yeah. And everybody else that's out there, just do what you love because you can't be able to do this every single day if you are not invested in it, if you don't literally love it. Right now, I've been talking for, I don't know how long it is. I don't even care as long as I feel like I'm giving value, you know, as long as I know that I'm giving value. I mean, this is not the age. This is 2018. There's no way I should be sitting here and telling people to do what they love, but I'm surprised half the time the people that inquire with me and I'm like, how long have you been doing this? Oh, three months, oh, four months. And I'm like, you've got the audacity. You've got the guts to say you want to be doing this for the rest of your life. And, and in three months, in four months, you want to give up? Ladies and gentlemen, it is a gift to actually be paid to do what you absolutely love. And if you can find it earlier on in life, I mean, I'm only 34. I can only imagine what the rest of my life is going to be like when I've already found what actually turns me on. So it just means the rest of my life, I'm just probably going to die the happiest old person ever. And then I'm going to be the most annoying person in the old people's home because I'm just going to be so filled with achievement, having done everything else while everybody else is stuck with regrets. 
right? So that's my mission, really, to be that guy in the old people's home. So just do what you love, guys. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, if you truly love what you do, your passion sells it more than your words, than your ads, you know? And you are always over. I mean, like I said, whatever you need to do for your audience, you really need to make really bold and big promises and over deliver. And if you don't love what you're doing, you will run short, you become a one click wonder and you become a has been. So if you're not getting the energy that you're finding, maybe what you're doing is not what you're supposed to doing. You know, challenge yourself one day. And ask yourself, if I wasn't doing this, what else would I be doing? If you come up with three or four different options, then that thing that you're doing right now is not meant to be. Right? And, and Robert says, indeed, it's a gift. One that's slowly starting to return money. Um, but if, but it's always paid me in love and enthusiasm for life and people in great abundance. Because at the end of the day, I mean, yes, money is another big motivation. But what if there was no money to do this for? You know, some people wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Another great question is, if what you're doing, is it meaningful? Do people seek you out in a crowd to actually find you so that you're doing what you're doing? You know, because if you're just doing anything for the sake of money's sake, it's a mistake. Not doing what we love in the name of greed is very, very, very poor management of our lives. I believe that whoever is watching this or whoever would have the opportunity and the privilege to watch this video in the future would actually be living and having a happier existence. I mean, we love money. We buy things. We, 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 you know, we show up. But if money is the only motivation, find something that you literally cannot live without or the world cannot live without because only you can provide it. And that, my friend, is exactly what will actually be fruitful for you and um, works out. Now, Esther says, hi, Prosper. How do I get past gatekeepers, receptionists? My niche is um, healthcare, and I need to create relationships with CEOs and managers, but it's hard to get to them. Any tips? Okay. I'll tell you something. Create content that gatekeepers don't need all right because the problem that people have is you think you need to call up to get to a ceo but a ceo reads while he is um you know in between his golf games so if you've got content that he can be reading in between that you have gone way past the gatekeeper and you have strung his um emotions all right so put out content if if people are in your way they're only doing their job and be kind to those gatekeepers because at the end of the day, um, you know, they, they are actually giving you feedback that you're doing it wrong. The people these days that are CEOs, they're reading, they are being seen, um, you know, in different, um, you know, um, environments, floric and be seen in those environments so that you actually make friends with them or simply be on LinkedIn. Connect with them on LinkedIn and start putting out content that's actually valid. Because if you can surpass the gatekeeper by, you know, speaking directly to your target audience, you wouldn't be having this problem. Put out content. Let them watch your videos. Let them read your content. Because they are also looking to grow. They are also looking to expand. So how else are they going to do that? They read content. All right. So at the end of the day, if you really want to fight with the gatekeepers, they're only there for 18 bucks an hour and they don't even care if your business exists or not. So why are you putting the, you know, the risk of, of, of the jeopardy of, you know, the existence of your company for somebody who's probably going to be fired just because they didn't put through your phone call in the first place? You know? And Sue says, Esther, in your target market, you need a robust LinkedIn strategy to reach your audience. Absolutely. And like you need to be friends with Sue. She's been putting out really good content on, on strategies on how online businesses can actually survive. So Esther and Sue, I would like that maybe after this, you guys connect and, and figure out how you, you girls can help each other. But all I can say, Esther, is please make sure 
that you put out the stuff that your, um, you know, your, your, your CEO audience is looking for. Because people come to the internet to get information. And CEOs are always looking to be better. CEOs are always looking to improve. Now you position yourself as a person that really can help those CEOs do better, be better, and present work um, you know, to, 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 to their bosses or whatever it is. So you want to make sure that you are putting out strategic content that only the CEOs have privy to. And the internet is making that a whole lot easier. So it means what you're doing right now is you have been relying on using the phone. Can I ask you something? If I, I want you, Esther, one other thing. Can you type in your phone number in the, in the, in the comments there? I want everybody who's watching this to give you a call. Because if you can't do that, why do unto others, um, you know, what you cannot do unto yourself? And I see Chris has just tuned in. Thank you so much. I'm not a big fan or supporter of um, telemarketing um, or cold calling. I really, really viscerally believe we now live in an opportunity um, environment where you can literally find who you want to talk to and put stuff that is directly, um, you know, that is directly, uh, you know, aligned to them. And people will seek you out. These CEOs, are they in groups on LinkedIn? Are they in groups on Facebook? where the gatekeepers are not present. Because guess what? Gatekeepers work nine to five if they're lucky or they, they work half time or they're doing a half day just so they can put little Johnny to kindergarten. So don't leave the jeopardy of your business on somebody who doesn't care at all about your own existence. All right? So when they're working nine to five, yeah, if, 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 um, if, um, what do you call it? If, um, what can I say? If, if a gatekeeper is working nine to five, the CEO is still going to be reading, um, or, you know, investing in themselves. That's the reason why they're the CEO. And if you're trying to get through to them during business hours and something that doesn't really help them, you're missing the point there. You know, you're missing out on the point. <laughs> oh, when I said put your number out there, I <laughs> okay, that's fine. I mean, maybe maybe um, the, the the joke didn't really sit well, but um, what I'm just trying to say is the CEO is is constantly trying to improve. So be in front of them when they're seeking out content because people are coming to the internet to get information. So put out content, put out videos that actually um, um, you know that actually. Uh, relate to that CEO and they can watch it on demand. All right. Just like what Netflix is doing. They're not telling you to come and watch an event right now because it's being streamed, um, you know, live. No, you can watch it on demand. So create something that CEOs can come to you and just be intentional about your energy and your time. Don't go out there trying to, uh, you know, arm wrestle with, um, you know, gatekeepers. They're just doing their job and they don't care at all. You know, they don't care at all. So choose where you spend your time and your energy, you know, or figure out. Sometimes CEOs go and report to work during the weekends and there's nobody manning the reception. Maybe you can try and, and, and call during those days or call after hours, you know. Oh, Esther, what I meant is, you know, if you put your number out, would you put your mobile number so that people would just ring you? For, for no reason, all right? So, yeah, figure out how these CEOs are operating. You know, maybe most of the time they're never in the office anyway. They're out there playing golf and, and, and making business for their, for, their, for, for their companies, all right? So, just figure out how you spend your time, how you actually create for and relate to the audience you want to reach out to, the internet has made it so easy for us to segment um, and, and also, you know, take out the, 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 the chaff, all the useless gatekeepers, but also you got to be respectful about them. And in the process, learn good communication skills because they're really critical to your success. That gatekeeper might be the only link to maybe a $100,000 deal. So communication, if you can 
sweeten the deal for her or him, whoever it is that's the gatekeeper. You know? Make sure you increase your communication skills and treat everybody else like they want to be treated. Always remember this. People want to feel important. No matter what they're doing, try and make it look like they run the show within that company. And I promise you, you will get way ahead than somebody else who's trying to say, hey, can I speak to your boss? You know, say, hey, Sally, ha, have I caught you at a good time? And then you take her off, you know, the, the, the general, you know, spill that telemarketers have. And then she starts talking about herself because people love to be heard. So let her do most of the talking. And then be like, you know what, I was wondering if um, John is there, but don't worry about, you know, putting me through. Oh, I just wanted to ask him a few questions since we met, um, you know, a couple of days ago. And then automatically you are different from somebody who says, hey, I want to speak to Prosper and I want to sell him this thing. Nobody has time for that. All right. Nobody has time for that. So learn how to treat other people. Treat other people as you want to be treated. You know, and once you increase on your personal skills and your communication skills, you would be way ahead than your competition. Because humility breeds a lot of wealth. All right. So at the end of the day, yeah, they are people too. How would you talk to people if you were seeing them in person? And Esther says, thank you so much for that, Prosper, and thanks for the tip, Sue Mills. Great. All right. Who else has got a question that we need to answer? Let me know if I can be of help. Because today, as you know, the show is the Ask and Prosper show, where I get to answer every question you might have and, you know, give tips and tricks in between. And for those that are here, if you run a website and if you, you know, want to be seen or be found, I'll be offering over the weekend free SEO, um, you know, checks on your website. So if you want to report, just type in SEO and then um, I'll communicate with you how um, I can give you a report on your website. So just type in the words SEO and then we will be in touch after we finish this cool stuff. And if you're really just enjoying the show, just type in the number one. You know, and um, yeah, let's just see how far we can take this because I really want to create for and relate to everybody that's on here because I feel like I owe it to you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So if you're enjoying the show, just type in the number one or if you out there, yeah, have fun. Now, Julian says I was running through this with one of our guys um, on a telesales campaign. Talk to your prospects as if. You know, they are your best friends. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because then you're not the only person that's ringing them. You're not the only person that's actually, um, you know, that, that that's ringing those gatekeepers. You really want to treat them as if they're speaking to their um, friends. And also, one other thing, they actually hate their job. Can you imagine if your job is to tell people no all the time? It's, it's, there's nothing exciting about that. So change the, you know, change their pattern a little bit. Go in there as if you already know who they are. Do a bit of research about the company. And just don't go in as if you are calling in from India as well. Because then, you know, they're used to that. And you're not making a difference. Give people value. Add something to their day. Something that nobody else can do. And guess what? If the, if the person you really want to speak to is not in the building... When you ring again, you know what's going to happen. They, they might actually send you an email and say, Hey, Prosper, you wanted to speak to Sally. Sally's in the office now. You know? So they are actually hating their job. Make their job easier for them. You know? Don't add on to the problems they already have. Because when somebody goes in for a demeaning job like being a receptionist or a secretary... You know, a receptionist is just a fancy security guard who's wearing fancier clothes. Do you know what they have to do? Sifting through people that are not allowed in the building. So they're, they're just a high-tech security guard that has a computer and can speak better than the normal security guard that carries a gun. So they don't like their job. You know, <laughs> they don't like their job. 
So make it better for them. Now, Julian says high energy. Make it personal. Try to deflect away from their boring job. 80% of employees hate their job since 1955. Absolutely. Can you imagine? Look at this weather right now. If you're in Melbourne or you're in Sydney, it's obviously a perfect day. And they're looking outside, but they cannot go past their table. Can you imagine how demeaning that is? And they can only go out for a 50-minute break or a 30-minute break. They're pulling their hairs. So you want to make sure that the next time they, um, you know, um, you know they, 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 they pick up the phone, even though they're smiling or whatever it is, that's rehearsed. They're just a cog in a wheel that is functioning. And like I said earlier on, they're just a glorified security person that just wears fancier clothes. So you want to just make sure you don't say that in their face, though. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be banned or you'll be red flagged. Yeah? Just make sure you, you, you make their day a whole lot better. Leave people better than you found them. That way, people will be more than happy to, you know, do and, and, and cross mountains for you. Because as you all know, nobody's going to jump oceans if you're not willing to cross puddles for them. They're people too. They have feelings. You know? No matter, no matter who you are, no matter what CEO level you are in, humans are humans. Treat them well. Treat them with respect and they will go out of their way to make sure that you get what you want. And after you've gone past them, thank them. And one other thing that you should do once they give you that opportunity, be... Let it be the first thing that you mention to the person you're talking about. He'll be like, John, do you know, do you know Sally at reception is actually totally amazing? Like, like if, if, if I didn't know I was going to speak to you, I'd give her an interview. So automatically, you're already giving the John you're going to be speaking to value for saying you've got a really good person there. And guess what's going to happen after the call? Even if they forget what you spoke about, he's not going to forget that you complimented uh, Sally and when he walks past, you'll be like, hey, Sally, good job. And guess what happens to Sally? Her self-esteem for being a glorified security guard is better for the rest of her day. And you just make it better for the other people that are going to call and you set yourself so different from the other guys that are going to call after. So that's how you treat gatekeepers. I don't do any gatekeeping or gatekeeping talking. This is just... Common sense. You know? And once you start doing all these little habits, it becomes natural. And before you know it, you you smashing through the gatekeepers like you own them. Like they know you. <laughs> like, hey, Julie. Hey, listen, Julie. Because they also say their name in the call. They'll be like, Hi, my name is Julie. And you're at Live Long Digital. How can I help you today? Catch that name. And then you'll be like, Sally? Automatically, because people like hearing the sound of their 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 their, their name. Um, I think it was Del Carnegie in How to Win Friends and Influence People. He says that the the person's name is like music to their ears. So before you even know it, you've already complimented them that at least they're doing their job well. They have transmitted a message, which is their name, which is all they care about in that whole establishment. They care about their name and what they get paid. So obviously you can't talk about how much they get paid, but you can maximize on knowing their name. And once you do that, the courting process starts because every word buys you the next three words. Every word that you put out buys you the next three words. Every three words buy you the next 10 words. So, you know, if you don't want to be shut out of the business, be nice. And Julian says their name is so important. Uh, and yes, thank them for everything. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Because at the end of the day, um, yeah, you're dealing with humans. So let's, um, let's have some more questions. Let's figure out where we're at with this. Let's figure out how it's all going. I'm really hoping that you guys are enjoying this and um, if there's anything you want me to talk about, just ask it as a question and we'll see how we can go. I'm not saying that I know everything, but I just, 
I, 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 you know, I've been doing this for quite a while and I've formulated habits that, um, you know, warrant me to help you by actually helping you. And, um, you know, if I'm not well versed with the question or the answer, I'll definitely get somebody else who is well equipped to answer that question for you. All right. Coolio, coolio. Um, how long have we been going for? I can't see. I lost track of time. Uh, it says, uh, yeah, I think we're almost, I think we're almost ready to wind this up. I really want that if you're in Australia, um, you know, don't be left out and join us, um, on the Australian business online directory. We've got a lot of people putting content out there. Um, you know, the likes of Julianne, thank you so much, my man, the likes of Sue, they are putting out content that is designed to help you start, scale and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And we want to create a platform that, you know, we will all connect, we will all share whatever value we have. And in the process, we become this really big force, um, you know, that is well connected, well, um, you know, you know, informed so that we can be, do and have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Um, the internet is always going to be changing. Platforms are almost going to be changing. I really want that whatever you're doing, you're creating something that you can actually pass on to the next generations. You're actually creating something you're going to be proud of instead of you creating on, you know, creating something that is not meaningful. All right. Um, Robert says, I remember faces and I continue to work on names. Absolutely. But also in the online space, a lot of people are not putting, you know, their face for you to remember. So remember, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, this just reminded me because people remember how you made them feel instead of what you actually said. So yes, you might remember those faces, but also make people feel good. Because every time um, people are always looking for an outlet for their emotions, uh, people are always looking for practical value in every interaction. We have so much choice. So you want to make sure that people don't feel like their time has been wasted. Their air has been contaminated by you being in their presence. All right. Um, yeah, because if they could, they could just swipe you right or swipe you left, whichever way whichever way things are happening on the internet these days, all right? So be out there and wow your customers. Always make sure you're the first person to congratulate your customers when they do well because we are connected, but not a lot of people really have the connection that we seek and, and, and seek after. People have become so busy and so desensitized that even a smile, people would ask you, why are you smiling? Why are you so happy? You know what I mean? Things that are supposed to be natural because, you know, the media is working 24-7 to make sure that you are living in fear, you're living in, 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 in discomfort or whichever way so that whoever, um, you know, has, you know, agendas on people is actually winning. So you want to make sure that you are the purple cow. You are the different person. You are the anomaly. You are an outlier out there. You're making a difference no matter whether you're being, 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 being paid for it or not. All right? Because it's right at the edges. Right? People that are at the center that are being seen as doing well, they become the norm. People that are at the edges are the ones that are actually going to be moving towards the center and doing different things and remarkable things that then constitute you to have word of mouth so that people can talk about your business. And once people start talking, you now have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. All right. I really want that you win. I really want that you're out there creating for and relating to your audience. I really want that whatever you're doing or whatever you're touching, your business is growing um, and you're putting in systems and strategies that are designed to make it grow and you making a profit. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I really want that you're earning more money with less struggle, but it just doesn't become formulated by itself. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of processes. There's a lot of stuff you got to do behind the scenes in order for you to be, do and have um, a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you ever want to, um, you know, grow 
in this day and age, make sure you have an audience that has given you permission to sell to them because people like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. All right. So I'm really, really happy with the way things are going. Our platform is growing. Um, you know, uh, we, we now have uh, teams and we now have people that are contributing for content. If you're in Australia, type in the, the, the letters D-I-R so that I can send you through a link for you to join our directory where you can actually generate leads and revenue. And we'll be working around the clock for your PR and branding so that you can actually, um, you know, have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. I really want to inspire you to do things that inspire you. And if you've made it to the end of this video, please share this. You know what I mean? Just spread the word. I'm not doing this for uh, popularity anymore. <clears throat> I'm good. You know, I really just want that people um, out there get the message, get to do things that actually um, they enjoy and know that there's people out there that are viscerally, um, you know, um, uh, inclined to help them. All right. Because I really believe that your business right now will be profitable and it's going to be enjoyable. And once you start putting out content, you'll be able to create for and relate to the audience that you're going to be um, working with. So this is the Last episode of this week, there was not too many questions today, but I really want to thank those that contributed to make this show a success. Thank you so much. I wish you a fantastic weekend ahead. And if you think, you know, you might have other questions, type them in the comments below. I'm really, really excited about what's about to happen. I'm really, really excited about those people that are actually working um, in order to, to, to wow their audiences, to delight um, you know, those people they're going to be demanding money off of. Because it's people that are going to be paying for all those goals and dreams that you have. you got to make sure they are on your side. you got to make sure they've given you permission for you to actually be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I hope this has been fun for you as I've enjoyed creating it for you. But guys, guess what? All you can do is all you can do. All right. This is an hour's worth of work. Thank you so much for all your contribution. I will be seeing you on Monday at 2 p.m. AEST without fail. I think I won't be available on Tuesday because we're shooting something. I will be confirming that. But if I'm not there, just check in with me. Maybe I'm sick. You know, I'm human too, but just check in with me, find out what's going on, um, if I'm going to be doing a show or not. In the meantime, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all your support. And thank you so much for just being you because you are doing your part in making this world a better um, place. You're creating products and services that will make other people have a happier existence. And for that, I applaud you, sir. For that, I applaud you, madam. Keep it up. Keep doing it. And if I can be of help, don't hesitate to explore that option. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.